coffee on a Tuesday in vlog 27. Okay, so if you're like me, it wasn't or it won't be until the last semester of college undergrad when you really catch the bug of learning. Now there must be a thousand reasons for this belated development, reasons which are universal and so forgivable, the most conspicuous being that high school literally rips it out of you in favor of a more relevant apparatus, that is, a system for navigating social relationships, in other words, a system for how to be cool. I'm not totally sure that it's a bad thing, this development of a social aptitude. I actually think that there is such a thing as cool, and I would define a cool person as someone who engages others with their ideas. Someone who is receptive enough to friends and acquaintances and even strangers to see when the other is clearly not interested in what you're saying. Telling a story that your audience can't possibly relate to is not cool. Boasting is not cool. Isolation is not cool. I don't go in for winners and losers, but I do go in for cool. Okay, so there was this one time in eighth grade when I was acting out in class, being loud and clownish and stupid, and my teacher, Mr. Leventhal, told me to go wait outside. You know, that horrible exile of secondary school when you get reprimanded and everybody sees it and it was even worse because I liked this teacher you know we were supposed to be friends well he came out into the hallway with a conciliatory look and said to me Evan look I know you're funny everyone in that class knows you're funny but being funny doesn't mean a damn thing if you don't have timing to this day that is the best certainly the most influential advice I've ever gotten. There's no question that it changed my life. Not right away, but good advice never does. Gradually, it sunk down and took hold, and in moments when in the past I would have blurted out some thoughtless vulgarity, I instead opted to keep silent, to listen, to feel the waves of a conversation, and say something or tell a joke only when the moment was prime for it. It's a lot like surfing, and like surfing, you're going to wipe out a lot in the course of getting better. No matter how good you get, the day will never come when you've said your last idiotic thing. Word of advice, don't trust anyone who never makes a fool of him or herself because that person is an alien. The more we grow, the more this mastery of timing augments our ability to get along in the world. It has its application in a perfectly executed joke, yes, but timing is in everything. It's in the way we treat our family, our friends, our teachers, our bosses, our employees. A good relationship depends on knowing when you should, for example, be deferential, and when you should stick up for your opinion, on understanding when it's okay to offer help to a friend and when it's okay to ask for it. Timing plays a huge part in your writing. A good story is not interesting, but for the rhythm at which it's told. The same goes for a good speech or a good lecture or a good vlog. I do think that it's a natural part of growing up, but it's one that becomes so obsessive in the early years that the desire to learn for learning's sake gets pushed to the fringe because it holds no value in social currency. And it's an obsession that lingers into the first years of college because we're all so anxious to fit in, and that's natural too, but I think eventually it dawns on us that what it meant to be cool in high school is not really gonna be enough to make a happy life. After graduating college, I became so extremely frustrated with how little I really knew. It seemed to me that all my knowledge was like so many free-floating clouds that had no connection. What I learned was easily forgotten and often contradictory. I had the timing stuff down, but now I wanted to know things. I wanted to know everything. So I resolved to start at the beginning with the foundation of all knowledge, philosophy. And I began to read like I sometimes eat potato chips ferociously. And the result of all that was this, a 36-page uh, discourse on truth, summing up everything that I thought and believed. I had it printed up at Kinko's and I sent a copy out to all my family and friends as if to say, here, this is what I know and this is who I am. If you're interested to read it, you can find a link to an online copy in the doobly-doo. I just reread it two years later and I don't agree with everything that's in there, but that's to be expected. There's still a lot of things in there that I do agree with. For me, it symbolizes more the beginning of a period of my life when I became obsessed with learning and it's an appetite that is perpetually unquenchable. It never gets boring because there's always something more to learn. The timing was, ironically, not so great. All of this happened after I had already graduated college, after the countless thousands of dollars were already spent on an education that I wish I could go back and get more out of. I would have taken so many more liberal arts classes if I had to do it again. But, aha, to the point of this circuitous video, you can do it again. On this phone, I have an app called iTunes U. On it, there are literally dozens of courses from schools like Stanford, Yale, and Harvard. 
Do you know how much Harvard costs in tuition per year? Do you know how much work you have to put in to get into that school? And they put their courses on my phone for free. I mean, f am I the only one who thinks this is awesome? Right now, I am taking a course, a Stanford course, called the International System in the 20th Century on my couch with a beer for no money at all. And I don't have to do any of the homework.